All right, so now let's look at water, how we go about drawing pools of water in the cave. Now, if you follow the uh, UIS standards, then you might end up drawing a pool. Let's see, let's grab, I can use the pen or the pencil tool. I'll use the pencil tool for simplicity. So let's say we got a pool of water right here. Let's give this the default stroke and fill, black and white. That's good. Actually, let's get rid of the fill here. Let me show you what I did. If you, if you create a shape and it's got a fill to it and you don't want that, um, in order to undo that, just select the, uh, or to get rid of that, select the fill, no fill. There we go. Okay, so UIS standards, I've drawn a pool, and now I might just draw, so I've grab and, grabbed the line tool, and then I just come and I draw some horizontal lines across there. And you can see this uh, takes a little while. So there's my standard symbol pool, uh, which may work great for your map, but I personally, sometimes, sometimes it works, sometimes I find it desperately boring. So I'm going to delete that, and I'm going to create my own cool pool. And uh, let's see, let's grab the pencil tool here. And I'm going to start off where we did before, just by drawing the outline of the pool. Now, in your map, you probably would have, uh, have this sketched on, but since this cave that we're working on has no pool in it, um, I'm just making one up. All right, so I've created my shape here. Now, one thing that I can do, and that is grab, I'm going to grab a gradient, just a very simple gradient. And to do that, I need, let's see, what do I need? I need my gradient palette. So window, let's go down to gradient. Mine's showed up right there. Yours probably shows up on the side, nested with the other palettes. Um, let's nest it over here with this one. And I'm going to apply a simple linear, or let's do a radial gradient. Okay. Now, for color, in order to adjust the colors on this, I need to open my color palette. So let's go to Window, and let's grab our color. It's already checked because mine is over here, nested with the others. So let's drop that right there. That's good. Okay. Um, the problem that I'm seeing here is I've got black and white. If I double-click on this little guy right here, this icon, it will open a color picker and allow me to choose a color. Now, I'm working in CMYK. If I went to RGB, I could work in red, green, and blue. So let's make this water's blue. Let's drag it up and make it blue. And we'll double click on this one. And let's see, white is probably fine, actually. So I'm going to leave that at white. And let's see, just click off of there. And then I can grab this to change how you notice there how the gradient blends from one color to, a ne to the next. Another thing that I can do is add points. So I'm going to click right here. See, notice how I have a plus as I hover just below the bar. That adds a point. I can double click on this and let's make it a cyanish color, light cyan. There we go. Click off, move that around, adjust this point. And then another thing I can do is grab my gradient tool here and now this is a little bit different in CS4. In CS3, 2, and 1, you click and drag out, and that will you won't get this bar, you won't get the circle here. You'll just have a line, and it will cause your gradient to be more gradual or less gradual. If I just drag a little bit, you'll notice that my gradient is very quick and very sudden. So the more out I drag, the more it becomes uh, nice and smooth. Okay, and I can rotate this. I can shift the colors here, which again, you can't do in CS2 and earlier. CS3 and earlier, I believe. So I've got all the control points there, and I can rotate it. Um, this doesn't really come in that handy with a, with a, uh, a radial gradient. Let's see, I think there's a point, though, where I can stretch it in. Let's see, there we go. That's kind of cool. Um, but with the linear gradient, so I'm going to change this from radial to linear. Um, now I can change the direction that this is going, so as it blends from one color to another. The shorter it is, the quicker the blend. The longer it is, the more gradual the blend. So that's one cool thing that I can do with gradients, make this, this uh, nice uh, looking colored pool. 
I don't really like this border around it though, or maybe I do. Maybe I want to give it a dirt colored border. So I'm going to grab some brownish right in. Let's see where's a nice brown, something like that. Let's make it more of a red brown. Hit OK. OK, and let's make that a little bit thicker. So we'll do a three point. Eh, that's too much. Two is good. All right, so there's my pool. Now, let me show you one other cool thing you can do with gradients. This is a different kind of gradient we're going to be using. It's called a gradient mesh. And that's this button right here. I select my object, so let's grab my object here. And then I'm going to click over here on the gradient mesh tool. We'll give it a second to think. And all I need to do at this point is click on my object. Now, my gradient's disappeared, but it's created this mesh. And anywhere I click, it will create a point that I can later control. So I'm going to add these points. I click three times. And now what I need to do is click on, let's see, I'm going to click on this point to select it. Come over into my color picker, and I'm going to grab a color. I can grab it down here. Oh, and the reason why I'm seeing no difference here, no effect, is because I've selected the stroke, not the fill. Let's bring the fill to the front. and. Now, I have no color options there. That's a problem. Why is it? Well, it's because I'm working in grayscale, not RGB. So let's switch it to RGB. And let's see. Blue is going to be the color of our water. So notice as I drag that up that it created a gradient right there. Now let's make it more of a cyanish. So I'll drag it to there. I'll click on the next point here. And now, if I want that same color or maybe a variation of it, then what I should probably do is grab my swatches. Remember we looked at swatches earlier. Let's see if I can find my swatches window. Let me go down to my swatches. There we'll reopen it. Let's bring it over here in color. And if I really like that color that I just picked, so let's see, let's click back over here. It brings that forward. I can, let's see, is it this one? I can go up here and create a new swatch. It opens up all the information about it. I hit OK. That shows up in my swatches and now I can add that to a few others. Let's click up there. I've added that same color swatch. Let's click here, here, and I'll go throughout. Let's see. I can also hold the shift key down and grab multiple points. At least I should be able to. Let's try that again and see. Oop, no, that didn't work. There we go. And shift. Nope, looks like it only lets me grab one at a time. Let's fill that swatch. And, there we go. and maybe I'll click on this middle one here. I want to change it. I'm going to add this. Let's see. There should be some here. I'm going to double click here and I'm going to make it a little bit lighter color. So I'm going to open my color picker. And it should work. Let's see. Yep, it did. So I can choose a color here, double click. Let's go even lighter than that. Let's take it to there, hit OK. There it applied it. And now comes the cool part. I can grab these points, move them around, and stretch out how that how that behaves. So there's let's see, let's move this even more over to here. No, it was too much. But anyway, you get the point. I can grab these control points and adjust them and apply whatever color I want and really tweak it to make it look like there's some sort of depth to my image. And let's click off of it and see what our final blob looks like. Okay, there we go. So I've done some really cool things with gradients in adjusting my pools here. And, um, and I think you're good to go on your water symbols.